Hey everyone, I'm your host today, El Russ, for the Women's Empowerment Project, Rise Up and Kick Ass. Today we have Allie Watts. She is an amazing badass uh, physical extraordinaire in terms of what she's been able to do as a personal trainer, as a fitness coach. She's really changed a lot of people's lives. She's a primal health coach and also runs 21 day primal blueprint challenges. Um, quite the athlete and we're going to learn a lot today. Hey, welcome Allie. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It was great to finally meet you in person at Paleo FX this year because we've only ever spoken on the phone. But let's start with, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that later, but let's start with how did you get into this? I mean, because I know you've mentioned to me, you know, you've always sort of, you're not out there saying, hey, be like me. I've always kind of been fit, but you've learned different paradigms and have kind of sifted through health through these years. So how'd you start out? Yeah, so, um, well... I guess I was a bit of a tomboy uh, as a child. I had two brothers, so I um, ended up playing soccer. Um, I think, do you guys call it soccer in America? Yeah. We do, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, so I got into soccer because my brothers did. Um, and I took that to a fairly high level um, up until sort of late high school, college, um, and realised that I didn't really enjoy the... Um, the group atmosphere got a bit bitchy, um, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah. So I've always loved sport and exercise. That's not to say that I was always um, muscular looking or strong or anything like that. In fact, when I was younger, I, was, uh, I never had like the ideal body, that's for sure. Um, but I did always enjoy exercise and um, probably too much at one stage. Um, so I, I, I tended to do things in extreme. So I started say running and I might run 5k and then I'm like, Oh, this isn't quite enough 10k. And I'm sure the exercise enthusiasts can know where I'm heading with this, but basically I, um, you know, even if I was to do 30k, it just wasn't enough. Um, and I, I basically got chronic fatigue, which is what they called back then anything that they didn't know what it was. Right. Um, so it's like the universal answer for any kind of, I don't feel well. Yeah, exactly. So I was um, really burnt out and um, actually couldn't even get out of bed. Like I was, I was really quite sick. And so as a result of that, I lost a lot of weight and just could not put the weight back on. Um, so that was a, an issue for me um, and a, a big struggle for a long time. Um, but that sort of began my fitness journey. Now in saying that I didn't get into actually working in the industry because I figured that it just wasn't enough money to be made in the industry and, and always thought about sort of making money was the most important thing. Uh, so I got into banking cause I thought that would be, um, now this was after a long journey of living in Japan, um, doing several degrees, getting a master's degree in linguistics and Japanese, getting paid by the Japanese government to, to study over there. But the whole time really interested in, in I was going to say health and fitness, but it wasn't really necessary health. It was just fitness. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I, I loved, um, I love the idea of just making money. And so um, after that journey and uh, living in Japan for sort of six years on and off, I came back and thought, I'll get into the banking industry. So I um, sort of worked my way up into, into banking and started off as like a home finance lender and then got into business banking and, and, and started making decent money and uh, selling my soul to the corporate life. Um, while I was selling my soul, I um, did a bit of part-time yoga teaching and ended up doing several different certificates um, in all sorts of different yoga um, modalities. Um, and at the same time, I, um, I did a training, uh, like became a personal trainer and a group trainer and did all my certifications for that um, and stayed working until one day I just woke up and I just thought, I'm not doing this anymore. I, don't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't watch the clock every day and feel like when is, when's the time to go home? I just can't do it anymore. And no matter how much money... And even if they said to me, look, we're going to triple your salary, I still would have walked out the door. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. So, you know, a lot of times people have the golden handcuffs, keeps them in something they don't want to do for a long time. Now, 
I don't believe in woulda, coulda, should is right. I know there's no regrets, but just in, just to indulge me, I mean, do you think if you were to look back, would you tell your old self, F the banking, just pursue what you're interested in? Is that what you would have maybe said? Well, if I had have done that, I mean, I, I would have been rich anyway, <laughs> a, lot, a lot richer, a lot quicker. Um, so I, everything's good in hindsight. But yes. in saying that, it actually helped me get to where I am today because yeah. my if I hadn't have had that business background and that learning, um, then I don't think I could have built my fitness business to the level that I have. Um, so you never know, do you? But I, I actually think in hindsight, it also every day I'm so grateful that I don't have to go to work. I, I never work. I never work. And that's just the best thing. I get paid yeah. to never work. And when even if I what did someone say when your vocation becomes your vacation? And people, people always say, oh, do your passion and whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah. But I can honestly say that it was amazing. But do you know when it, it took me so long to get to that point? And I realized the other day how I actually got to that point it was quite amazing. I decided I wanted to start, I just wanted to do something that I loved. And that was help people transform in their health and fitness so I was living in Hong Kong so I've just moved to New York but I was living in Hong Kong for four years and I realized that I love training people so I'm just going to start a boot camp and my husband's like are you going to charge for it and I was like no and then I'm like actually yeah I will the only reason is because I know people will value it if, if I charge for it that was the only reason it became a six-figure business in about two months. So, um, and that was it, like, total by accident because I didn't even want to earn any money. <laughs> um, but so not by accident, right? There was no resistance to it. You were like, I'm just doing what I love. And the universe just gave you the answer and was like, actually, we're going to give you some money for this. This is actually lucrative. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And so that's sort of where it all started. Let's um, let's get into you. Let's talk about you had a recent injury, you know. So for the for the athletes out there and the people who have things that hold them back, it's very tough to be a type A into fitness and be held back in some way and not be able to do what you normally do and to go through that process. Um, I've had a few things in life I've had to heal from, and I know this was a long one for you with your shoulder. So do you mind telling us about that experience? Yeah, so it was about a year ago. It was actually a year ago in Easter. Um, I was training for a cycling event, um, which I knew I was going to go very well in, but it's not really saying that much because in Asia, it's not that competitive for, for women. Um, and so I would, trained really hard and this was my last training ride. And I went out with the group that I'd always been going out with. There was a couple of people I didn't didn't see before and, um, so anyway, I was riding along, we'd only been riding for about 10 minutes and the guy in front of me just stopped. We we're going about 50 kilometers an hour and I'm not sure how many miles that is, but it's fast. And I was on his Three miles an hour or more. It could yeah. be more than that. I'm not sure which way it goes, but it's a lot, it's fast. It was about 40 miles an hour. Yeah. And I was on his wheel. Like when I say on his wheel, I was like one inch, maybe one millimeter from his wheel which is how you ride in a peloton and he stopped and I don't know why it could have been the guy in front of him stopped and, and so on. So anyway, long story short, I um, hit his back wheel, went head over and landed on my head and my shoulder. So sort of landed like that. Um, and as a result, my helmet split open and I had uh, four months of concussion and uh, I tore seven ligaments in my shoulder. So you probably know you've got eight ligaments. <laughs> it was quite funny. And the reason I'm laughing is because oh, I'm mean horrific. I remember getting like the email about it and being like, no, cause I just that visual of how that goes down is traumatic. Yeah. I, I'm laughing because when I, I got to the hospital, um, I was in a public hospital and they're like, they strapped my head up and they said, look, it's Easter holiday. So you're gonna have to wait five days to get your head checked. But don't, so don't move your head, and but your shoulder's fine. Now my shoulder was literally hanging off my body, and they did an X-ray. Um, but but obviously, you said you were fine. They're like, yeah, it's just a couple of bruises. Like what? Well, 
they didn't know how to x-ray from the right angle. <laughs> so this particular angle that they chose was the only angle they could have chosen to find that there was nothing wrong. Um, anyway, I ended up getting into a private hospital. The surgeon said it was the worst shoulder injury he'd ever seen, but he was amazed that I hadn't actually broken a bone and I'd torn seven ligaments. I wish I had a broken a bone actually, because it's much easier to heal than, than seven ligaments. So that was um, a bit of a, uh, <laughs> A bump in the road, I guess. Um, it, it's it, everything's relative, and 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 look, don't get me wrong. I was I was like, no, I'm still riding in this competition in two weeks' time. I'll be fine. Um, but and 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 also, you're very, like at the hospital asking them if they have a gym. They're like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not quite, but I must say. So this was um, I got out of hospital the operation on the Monday, and I insisted on teaching my boot camp on the Tuesday and realized that I've got another arm so I can just use the other arm, which was a really good thing to do for me because what I realized was that um, so many people get injured and then they just just hibernate and, and, and don't move and, and think their whole body is, is just ruined. And it was like, no, actually, and I did a lot of research actually to find out if I still do stuff on my right side, will it help my left side? And there's not a lot of evidence that I found, but um, it tended to say that, yes, it'll actually help. Because what happens is your other side goes, oh, I need to match it. Right. It can't so, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that was actually one of the reasons why I, I rehab so well. And when it's still a long, it's still a journey. I think the other reason too is that five years before that, I had a double hip surgery. Um and if anyone's ever had a double hip surgery, we probably haven't because most, most doctors won't do double hip. They'll only do one or the other. Um, so um, I convinced them to do two because I wasn't going to go back. That was a structural problem. But I remember waking up from that surgery and thinking that my life was over. Um, so it was like eight months in a wheelchair. I uh, couldn't go to the toilet by myself. And so actually having a shoulder injury and a bit of like four months of concussions, nothing. You're like, yeah, um, yeah you're like, I got like, Bring it on. No, I'm, I'm making it sound much, much easier than it was. But I, um, every, you know, I look back on the hip surgery and think, you know, you couldn't have had anything worse happen. But at the same time, some amazing things happened to me during, during that time. One of which was I learned to meditate. And I know that I would never have slowed down enough to do that if it wasn't for that injury. Uh, sorry, that, that surgery. It wasn't actually an injury. It was a structural problem and I couldn't actually end up, I couldn't walk. I had FAI, which is an impingement in the hip socket. So imagine your hip socket's like this and your hip's here. So what happened, my um, femur head was actually right up into the hip joint. And so it sort of impinged every time I tried to walk. And that was on both hips. So I, I didn't really have a choice, but... Um, if anyone is considering hip surgery, please email me and I'll talk you through the pros and the cons because I, I do tend to wonder whether it was the best idea. Do you mean um, you felt like you could have lived with the in with, with this condition or? I definitely couldn't have lived with how it was, but I feel that I could have done some things to make it better. And, and I'm not 100% sure of that, but I still wish I had have tried a lot more things before I went down the surgery route because apart from being very expensive um, and very, I mean, horrific. <laughs> um, and like I said, there were good things that came out of it for sure. Um, and, and another really good thing actually that came out of it was um, I, I've always been pretty flexible, especially, you know, teaching yoga and whatever. And I never really understood my clients that weren't flexible. Um, and how, how much pain and hardship it was to actually go to a yoga class. And so I, I continued doing yoga in the wheelchair. I just went and, in, and sat and did meditation. But I, um, when I started, well, I got onto crutches and then started stretching again, I couldn't even touch my knees. And this is someone who's totally flexible. You know, I could do the splits or anything. I could put both my feet behind my head, anything. Um, and then going back to this point where like I was less flexible than a un very, very inflexible person. So for me to oh, actually... It's humbling, isn't it? Yeah. 
really humbling, but also just, it just made me empathise with, with everyone. For all my students from now on, I just totally get it. But I also know that you can come from where I was back to, you know, back because now I'm fully flexible again, although I haven't taken my flexibility to the extreme dream although you might argue with that because of course i can do I, this. okay i would argue that i argue anyone to go google her and see her on like double like gymnastics rings like holding up our shoulder like, and you're like how did she get into an accident a year ago so i your your interpretation is different isn't it yeah so back on the shoulder injury the doctor basically said to me look you're never going to be able to do what you were doing with your shoulder before um, in terms of like any sort of um, pull-ups and that sort of thing. And I'm like, I just want to be able to do 100 pull-ups again. How long will that take? And he said, well, three years, because he, he actually thought it was impossible. And I remember a year to the day, I, I just did 100 pull-ups and I was, um, nice. it didn't even hurt. Um, yeah, you know, I, I love it when people try to put uh, physical therapy assessments on one's limitations or not regarding healing. And so to the audience listening, never take that, get free opinions. And even if someone says it's going to take longer, it doesn't mean that that's going to be the way for you. Uh, just like Allie uh, at the, and working for the Primal Blueprint, so many success stories of injuries or people healing from something that were told, whether they had three months to live or whether they told this was going to be chronic, to find out that it had nothing to do with that. They weren't really depressed. It was a food allergy. Like there are answers. Um, yeah. What, aside from, obviously, we're not going to go into physical therapy specifics in terms mm. of how do you exercise, you know, yeah. but what are some of the tips and tricks? I mean, obviously, I know you and I are both primal health coaches. We're a fan of paleo primal living, all of the different levels of that, whether it's low carb keto version or, a, or just a standard version. So I know you'd start there. What are some of the things you incorporated into your nutrition and other protocols to, to really kind of facilitate this quick uh, recovery? Yeah. So... When we say um, it's a quick recovery, I still don't feel that I'm fully recovered. Well, I'm not. I still get headaches from the concussion and I'm actually booked in to see a neuro optometrist tomorrow. So I haven't been able to see properly out of my left eye since the accident. And I went to the doctor the day after the accident. I went to the optometrist and he said to me, would you believe that I'm getting old and that's why I can't see out of my left eye. I'm like, I swear to God, if I hear any other doctor ever say that again, which I hear a lot, like, well, you know, you're getting into your forties. It's like, Oh, F you don't, don't, don't call age. Don't blame age. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not that much older than I was two weeks ago when I got a eye test and I had 20, 20 vision. So anyway, and I've actually put, I put it on the back burner. Um, mainly just because, you know, moving countries and whatever else. But then uh, at Paleo FX, I met some amazing people and they told me about a neuro-optometrist or neuro-ophthalmologist that I never knew existed. Excellent. Um, and these guys actually are the people that I need to see for this. So apparently there's some, some sort of thing that you can train your eyes back to, to normal. So I'm looking forward to that. And... Um, yeah, but back to your, your question. So when um, you can't just, it's not just a mental thing like, oh, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to be better and I'm not going to listen to what the doctor says in terms of, because you can always overdo it. And I'm very mindful of that. Um, but the, most people just underdo it. Um, so it's finding that fine balance between overdoing it and underdoing it. And I did exactly what my physio said and I knew that I wanted to do more all the time. And he, you know, I said to him, listen, I'm going to do more than what you tell me to do unless you tell me not to, but I'm going to follow your instructions. So you've got to have faith in your physio and you've got to let them know what you're like and that you'll tend to do less or more and they need to be specific with you. So that was one thing. Um, the next thing that I'd really recommend is, I mean, your diet. I mean, it's a hundred percent. So with the concussion, I spoke to um, a few doctors, um, even on my podcast, you can check it out. I interviewed some from some experts in concussion and um, they suggested that I take fish oil and a lot of it. 
Okay, that's interesting. Did you talk to Kevin Ballister over at Paleo FX? Because uh, if people don't know him, look him up, feed a brain. He was in a coma, had 10% chance of ever even like blinking his eyes again. He's walking, talking. He's an amazing guy, feed a brain. And they always, uh, there you go. Yay. So, uh, so with, I, for the people, I want you to continue on, but for the people that are not familiar with this listening, people who have traumatic brain injuries, uh, whether it's from an accident or it could even be like a Alzheimer's situation or Parkinson's. So anything brain related, they often suggest a keto low carb paradigm, but also high doses of fish oil that most doctors would say, no way you're crazy. So take it from there on the fish oil. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was recommended to take like six times what you normally, what you normally take. And that I really believe helped my helped my head a lot, um, and 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 I also think collagen was another another really good supplement that I added. So those two were the were the, were the main supplements that I added, and uh, sorry, and magnesium as well. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of magnesium, and then like you said, it was just a diet that didn't that that, that didn't include processed foods. That it was a primal diet, um, and. Very that, anti-inflammatory. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that combination, I believe, like if, if, if I had have done all the other things and not done that, I wouldn't have got to where, to where I am now. So, so it's definitely that as well. Um, and then, do you know, I think a really big thing for me as well is the support that I have like in my immediate family. So with my daughter and my husband, them being so supportive makes a massive difference with how you, how you recover. Um, so, you know, like I couldn't put my bra or anything on for at least, at least three months. Um, and just having, you know, that support, like my daughter was trying to help me. She wasn't very good. She's only four. Um, (laughs) but just having, you know, that bigger picture, um, is, is really good. But another thing too is just, looking at the bigger picture. And what I mean by that is if I ever sort of started to feel down for myself, I'd just go and like train with some people that don't have legs, Um, you know, and that would just open my eyes. In fact, I just went for a swim today and that's why I've got... Me too, by the way. I went this morning. (laughs) That's why I've got goggle eyes. And that's one of my rehab things that I do with my shoulder. It's really good. Um, for my shoulder, albeit I've got metal in there, so I'm, I can't swim too far, but that's not a problem for me because I'm not very good at swimming. But in fact, I was, I'm was i really not good at swimming because the guy next to me didn't have legs and he was 10 times faster than me, <laughs> which which really makes you realise how slow you are. But, um, but you're getting your ass kicked by a guy with no legs. You're like, all right, exactly. I definitely need some swimming lessons, yeah. <laughs> I know, but it's great because you know, you just go, okay, well, what if this was for life? And um, so I think a combination of all of those things. And, and one other thing I really wanted to say too was that um, it's when you do get injured like that, it's, it's almost like your invitation to give up. And it's really quite interesting because a lot of people just said to me, oh, yep, yeah, I've had a shoulder inju- injury like five years ago. And look, this is as far as I can ro- raise my arm. And they're like this. I'm not joking. After a year, yeah. I'm like really, after a year, I can straighten it almost. And and they're like, nah. I was told I'd never be able to straighten it. And I'm like, so what? <laughs> so they bought into that and yeah. didn't even try. But not only that, I think a lot of family members and friends will all say to you or imply to you perhaps that you've now got an excuse never to be fit again because you you. you you don't have two hips, you know, if, if I had have said to you, look, I'm not very mobile. And you're like, yeah, of course you're not because you don't, you had a double hip operation. So of course you're not mobile. And it's almost like you're giving me permission just to surrender basically. It be a victim in whatever victim. sedentary life. Yeah. Might be. yeah. And you know, on the subject of injury, because I have a lifelong injury, my, both of my arms got injured at, in the workplace when I was 23. I have severe tendonitis in both my hands. I live mostly a pain-free life, but I've been dealing with it for 20 years. So I just know what to do, what not to do, how to push it. And um, I will say too, like, let's get into a little bit of emotional aspects because you were talking about your family. If you don't have a family that's there for you, sometimes it's hard to ask for help from people in these moments 
but you have to, you have to start because part of that, when you're healing from an injury, because I used to have people who had to carry my groceries for me from the, like a block away from the grocery store. Cause I couldn't even hold them in my hands. It's a very awful, embarrassing, like weird thing to, to, to be disabled and to have someone help you like that. But it also, the vulnerability and the invitation there in that, in that connection with whoever it is you're asking is, a, is a lovely aspect. It's a positive aspect of being in it. something that can bring people closer, uh, make a friendship better, or, you know what I mean? There's, there's so many other aspects of injury. Like you're talking about not being able to put on your bra. Well, if you didn't have your husband or your, your daughter, right, you might have to call a friend or it might be a neighbor. Mm. That's an older woman. You don't know that well, but in reaching out, you know, it's tough, especially when you're alpha to reach out and ask for help. It's like, you don't want to admit that you need any help. Mm. Right. You got to ask. You're right. You're right, and it actually brings you closer to that person as well. I remember going over to my neighbour and saying, "Can you help me put my bra on?" And it was a lady, so it's all right. Um, but yeah, and it, and it made made her feel good that I even asked her. So right. you know, um, I think there's that two way. But she felt good about helping you exactly as well. You know, yeah. um, I, I absolutely agree. One time, because I have an arm thing, I was in a having a flare up one day and I was driving in Los Angeles and um, I was having a pity party for myself about it. Just like, cause when there's a flare up, you remember you have the injuries. So it's kind of like a, uh, and I had this moment where I was just kind of <laughs> about it, feeling the pain and being annoyed. Although I knew that if I rested for a few days, it would go away in this like victim mode. I take a left and I'm not kidding you. There was a guy sitting at a coffee bean, a popular coffee shop in LA, drinking a cup of coffee with one effing arm. Yeah. You know, it was like right in my face. It was like right in my face, you know? So, so yeah. someone always has it worse than you, no matter what. Right. Totally. And, and also too, you know, what are the kind of positives you can draw from it? Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yeah, well, another thing with the rehab, I guess there were two more things I wanted to say. Another thing, gymnastics really helped. I mean, more than any physio, it was amazing. So gymnastics is something that I hadn't done before and I started doing it. Obviously, you don't just right. jump to gymnastics with an injury, but it really did help strengthen it. So that was amazing. Another thing too, Elle, you might remember a phone call. Um, on my way to New York, I went via Australia for a couple of months mm -hmm. and I woke up one morning and I couldn't move my arm, my shoulder. So it was getting better and I was feeling really good. I could almost, you know, do some, do heavier weights on it and I was just feeling really good. And then all of a sudden I woke up one morning and couldn't move it. And then the next day, still couldn't move it. Next day, no. So it was about a week and I think I spoke to you after about a week and I'm like, not happy. <laughs> and I felt like you had a setback. You had a setback. Yeah, a massive setback. And obviously when something like that happens, you have no idea about how long that's going to last. And thankfully it didn't. But all I could tell myself was that, you know, look, look at what I've got in my life. You know, what am I grateful for? Look at all these things. And at the end of the day, even if I didn't have an arm, like I can still do everything with my other arm, you know, and this is going. Okay. And then if I don't have arms, but there was still levels of gratitude at every worst case scenario. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think without that, you just would give up. Right. So you can't yeah. give up. We're both examples in general, but uh, perseverance pays. It does with anything. I paid with hype getting through hypothyroidism, um, you know, on my side and then being able to write a book about it. I mean, I'm glad I persevered and figured it out for my own health, but for others too. Um, persevering through an injury and being able to lift your arm above your head when people still years later can't um, because they didn't think it was possible. And I know you and your attitude throughout it. I know you know, as you voiced, part of you was like, ooh, it's going to be hard for me to kind of, I have to take a step back now from all this activity. But but the other part was just so, um, gosh, I mean, there was not one moment where I thought you doubted that you wouldn't fully recover. Like there was, you know what I mean? You, you, you have a determination. Yeah. I mean, I think I did doubt it uh, several times, but my underlying determination just came came through keeps, I guess. yeah keeps overriding it yeah yeah 
Let's yeah. talk to people about how they can connect with you because you you have created communities online. You you offer help to people to get, you know, we talk about and people can always go to the primalblueprint.com, Mark's Daily Apple. They are the publishers of my book, The Paleothyroid Solution. We are both primal health coaches. And it's not to say we're pushing that on everyone. We do believe in it. You can find out so much about that way of living on those websites. But Allie runs programs around this to get people involved for the first time because it takes about 21 days to a month six weeks to really re reprogram your genes to become a fat burner instead of a glucose dependent sugar burner who has to eat every three four hours and is always like ah and you're a food addict that's how that works out so Allie helps people get out of that um, tell us how you work with people yes yeah, so what I found is like I get people really fit um, and they do make major transformations but as you know, 80% is what you eat and you are what you eat and it's, it's no joke. And so it gets to the point where, you know, I can only help you so far unless you change your diet. And I don't mean just change it for now. I mean, let's educate you and actually show you why you want to change it. And the most common question I get is, do I only have to do this for 21 days and can I go back and, and right. eat what I normally eat? And I'm like, yes, you can go back and eat what you normally eat if you choose to. And so far, I haven't really had many out of the thousands of people that, I've, that have come through my program have really chosen to go back. Um, so that's how powerful it is. I mean, it, I guess they just decide that they don't want to feel like crap. And, 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 and so, so, yeah, so um, if you go to my website, ali.fitness, um, you can um, you can definitely check that out. But I've actually got... Um, uh, an offer for for the listeners as well. Um, oh, are you going to have show notes, Elle? Yeah, we should have show notes with links we can put in or you can also just voice it as well for both. Okay, so um, we're going to, I'll put it in the show notes, but I'm going to offer, I've got a total training library, which is a combination of my boot camp, um, some yoga, some meditation, and some rolling so for recovery. And I'd like to offer it to all your clients. So yeah. if they go to ali.fitness slash, uh, slash women's summit. So W-O-M-E-N-S summit, women's summit. Yeah, so it's ali.fitness slash women's summit. So it's two S's. Forward slash, right? Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. forward slash. Um, so if they go there, then they can have my total training library for two months for free. That's so amazing. And no obligation. And like, I don't even care if you don't subscribe to it again, but I just want you to try it and um, get in touch with me. I'll also, um, if, if, you, if you'd like some more information about the 21 days and we can chat as well. But um, yeah, look, thanks, Elle. Thanks for letting me come on the show and... Uh, and if you're in Manhattan, come to gymnastics. Come and do gymnastics with me. Um, send me an email, ali at ali.fitness, and uh, we'll do some uh, crazy handstands and rings and whatever you want. That's awesome. And that's A-L-I for Ali, by the way, just so people are aware that's how it's spelled. Um, yeah, that gymnastics gym is pretty insane. There's some crazy photos of you doing like Olympic style situations going on there. How much fun is that? Yeah, so if you can, if you go to my Instagram, uh, I don't know my, <laughs> I don't Allie know. Allie Watts, W A T T S. They just they'll yeah. find you. Um, yeah, it might be the Ali Watts, is it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, cool. Thank you, L. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. Any last words to leave with the audience on recovery or primal paleo? Yeah, I mean, I just like I can't tell you that how much your food is, is important. Even if you don't want to exercise ever again in your life, just eat right. And you'll be 80% there in saying that your body is your engine. So just move and don't let any injury stop you. Because if I can do kettlebells with one arm, um, then you can do it with no arms because you're better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome thank you so much have a wonderful wonderful day excellent thanks